Good morning. Good morning. It's a nice, bright Monday morning. <laughs> September 21. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, Monday morning, September 21, 2020, you know, today, <laughs> today in the Philippines, politically, it's either people are celebrating or mourning, <laughs> because September 21 is the anniversary of the Declaration of Martial Law in the Philippines. Anyway, I remember that day very vividly. Yeah, when we heard the news about martial law was declared in the Philippines. Huh? <laughs> what? How old was I? I must have been... Uh, how old was I? Huh? Yeah. About there. Anyway. But, on the happier side of uh, things, today is also the feast of St. Matthew, the Apostle and evangelist saint matthew let me see who knows who saint matthew was huh who was saint matthew huh chevelle what's going on huh come on take your seat here chevelle okay who is saint matthew sorry jacob the tax collector the tax collector. St. Matthew was the tax collector. And being a tax collector, of course, he was a Jew, right? Being a tax collector, who was he collecting taxes for? The hmm? Who was he collecting taxes for? Who, was, who are his bosses? Huh? The what? The Romans. Huh? The Romans. Okay? So he was... He was working for the Romans. And because of that, he was so hated by his fellow Jews. And, and, uh, and everybody who worked for the Romans. Oops, why is my seat going down again? <laughs> Anybody who worked for the Romans, especially tax collectors, were hated by the Jews. Okay? Uh, because, number one, because they were looked upon as being, uh, you know, accomplices of the Romans in in uh, in the oppression of the Jewish people. At the same time, uh, tax collectors in general were thought of as very corrupt because uh, they exacted uh, taxes on people and yet they pocketed uh, portions of what they collect from people, right? So they, they were really despised by, uh, by their own fellow Jews. And that was the case of St. Matthew, okay? Matthew, the tax collector. So today, we'll read about how Matthew became uh, a, an apostle of Jesus Christ from being a tax collector. So the gospel today is from St. Matthew himself, who relates the story of his own vocation. Matthew's own vocation is related by himself, by Matthew, in his own gospel, chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. So let's see. He says, as Jesus passed by. So I want you to imagine a scene like this. Jesus passing by. Imagine the scene. Uh, you've, you've, seen, you've seen several movies, right? Uh, uh, the chaos in the streets of, of uh, Jerusalem, right? Uh, plenty of people selling, buying, walking, and just doing trading and, and, and merchandise and, and business on the streets of Jerusalem, right? And you would imagine St. Matthew there. So Jesus passed by. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. What's the customs post? Well, it's like a, uh, a must have been a little, uh, a little kind of office there where... Uh, where Matthew was was talking to people, uh, assessing assessing how much taxes they're supposed to pay and collecting from them. Right? So Matthew was working. Matthew was doing his ordinary work at the time that Jesus called him. 
Matthew was very much a professional man, right? Doing his ordinary everyday task of, well, tax collecting, because that was his work. It was at that situation that Jesus called him. Jesus called him to be an apostle right there at the tax collector's booth. Now, I want you to picture that because most of these apostles were called by Jesus that way. Imagine St. Peter, St. John, okay? and all the other apostles who were fishermen. When did Jesus call them? When they were conducting their ordinary, everyday work as fishermen. Our Lord called them and told them, From now on, you will be fishers of men. Instead of just being fishermen, you'll be fishers of men. And you know, come to think of it, our lady herself, young as she was, okay? When she was called by Jesus, by the angel Gabriel, rather, to be the mother of God, she was given her vocation. What could she be doing at the time that she was called, that she received that, that calling and that vocation from the angel Gabriel? She must have been doing her ordinary tasks, right? Her ordinary household duties as being, you know, a, a, a woman in her day and age in her little village. Right? She must have been helping uh, St. Anne with house chores and things that she needed to do for, you know, the upkeep of the home. So this is what Jesus does. He calls people right in the middle of what they do in ordinary life. He issues to them a call, a vocational uh, uh, calling that will change their lives forever and the same is true with saint matthew okay so jesus saw him at the customs booth and what does jesus tell him he gave him a very simple command and that was he said follow me very simple follow me I would imagine St. Thomas, maybe. St. Matthew. Uh, Saint, Saint Matthew, sorry. In, in, his, in his place. Saying, who, who, is, who is this guy? Who is this guy who all of a sudden just tells me, follow me? He must have been so intrigued by him that, okay, I'll give it a try, you know? Why not? I'll follow you, Right? Or maybe he has heard about Jesus somehow, right? Maybe he knew a little bit about this man who's been coming around town and, and been doing miracles and been doing these things. And Oh, wait a minute. Is that you? Is that him? Right? Maybe Jesus was passing by and people were already talking and telling him, Hey, 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 hey Matthew, look, 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 look. There's, uh, there's that miracle worker again. He's in town. See? Hey, look, uh, uh, there's that Jesus that everybody's talking about, right? Oh, really? Is that him? I can't know. And then all of a sudden, he comes to the booth where he, where he was and say, Hey, you, follow me. Right? And St. Matthew must say, who, who? Me? Me? Really? Me? Follow you? Me? A tax collector? Follow you? Really? Are you serious? <laughs> it must have stunned him, but it must have also driven him, not only out of curiosity, but maybe there was a real nagging feeling in him that there must be something serious and big about this. Why am I being called by this miracle worker kind of uh, prophet uh, mixed into one who they call Jesus? There must be something to it, right? And he goes, follows him. He got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, look at what he does. St. Matthew. Many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. 
What does Matthew do? What does Matthew do? After following Jesus, he, he throws a party, right? He throws a party. And guess who he invites in, a, in this party? Well, his fellow publicans and sinners. Why? Because those are his friends. He's a friend of sinners. He's a friend of other tax collectors. He is a friend of other publicans or public sinners like himself. So he calls them, hey, folks, hey, let's have a party. Jesus just called me. Yoo-hoo. I don't even understand what this means. But anyway, let's go party, right? Uh, you know, this, 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 uh, this guy named Jesus who uh, everybody seems to, uh, to be uh, acknowledging as somebody important and as a prophet. Wow, it's an honor to be, you know, called by this guy. So, hey, let's celebrate this, right? Okay, folks, I'm organizing a party at 6 p.m. at my home. Tonight, so come around. Let's check this guy out. Let's see what this guy's got to offer, right? But I just want you to know that I was called and I'm following him. <laughs> okay, so he organizes a party, and all of his, all of his friends, publicans and sinners, were there. And guess what? The Pharisees saw this. The Pharisees. And he said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Why is he partying with public sinners? He must, the Pharisees must have inquired with Peter and the other apostles. Why is your master doing this? Isn't he supposed to be, you know, a prophet? Isn't he supposed to be a good man? Why is he circulating among sinners? This is a scandal. What does our Lord do? Say in response, our Lord heard this. And he said, those who are well do not need a physician. But the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. What does that mean? The first verse, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You know, our Lord was giving a sucker punch on this. Pharisees, okay? because to them, they think that to be good means that you have to offer sacrifices all the time. See, it's in the sacrificial offering that, that your, your, your sins get forgiven and that you become a goody-goody person. Our Lord says, no, it's not in your phony kinds of sacrifices. It is rather the interior disposition that you have. If you know how to be understanding and merciful to others, that is more desirable to me than all of the sacrifices you offer or you think you offer for the forgiveness of your own sins. Learn how to forgive others. And that's what he's trying to tell them here. Why are you so critical that I am eating with sinners and publicans? Okay? Why are you so critical about that? Why can you not exercise mercy on them? And instead of putting many burdens on them, on these people, right? Exercise a little bit more mercy towards them and maybe you would have done something good. Okay? It's because I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. So I did not come in order to, you know, uh, to uh, make the righteous feel good about their righteousness. Rather, I came to cast fire upon the earth. And what more... Desire do I have than to see it already kindling? What does that mean? I did not come to, to console and pacify you goody-goody people. I came to rock your boat. I came to, <laughs> to give you some form of anxiety that should wake you up from your complicit uh, slumber and, and, and your, your easygoing ways. Eh? I came to call sinners to repentance. And that is what Matthew now stands to be for us a good testimony and proof that sinners can get converted. Okay? That sinners have a path to sanctity. That sinners, if they know how to repent and recognize the calling of Jesus Christ, then they can become great saints. 
And that is what we all have to aspire to. Right? Because we are also all called to become saints. We all have received a calling like, like St. Matthew. We all have received the calling. Okay? And we are all being called in our ordinary, everyday circumstances. You as students, now, you're still within this uh, formative years that you are doing your school work. Okay? Uh, well, you are being called by Jesus Christ to follow Him, to be an apostle. Right here, right now. Okay? You don't need to wait until... Afterwards, you don't need to wait until you're already a professional. You don't need to wait until you, before you get married or whatever. Or when you're old. No, as early as now, if you pay attention to Jesus' promptings every day, He is calling you to become a saint in everything you do. Okay? Here and now. And you can. You can use your present situation in life to become a saint and those among you who are working who are professionals who are parents okay uh, all of these circumstances of everyday life are means that Jesus is using to call you to become a saint yes right there in the exercise of your everyday common everyday daily duties there is where god is calling you to exercise that desire to become a saint and and and, and all the virtues that that uh, accompany that that exercise okay? uh, god is calling you to convert that path your professional path your family life your everyday social uh, interactions with people Every little thing you do can be converted to a means of sanctity. This is what our baptismal calling is all about. Okay? You don't need to wait for Jesus to come around <laughs> and call you and tell you, follow me. We have the Gospels to already uh, uh, turn to because the, the Gospel uh, accounts uh, is all about calling us. To be part of this mission of Jesus Christ. The salvific mission of Jesus Christ. And to be apostles um, in our own right. In the middle of our everyday tasks. Like St. Matthew who was called in his uh, tax collector's booth. Like Peter and the rest of the apostles called in their fishing boats. Like Our Lady was called Right in her own home doing her ordinary everyday chores. Okay? Like St. Joseph was called, you know, as a carpenter who did his daily work as a carpenter. So, you know, uh, we, this is the way Jesus calls us in our everyday, everyday work to become an apostle uh, uh, participating in his salvific mission. Okay? So let's listen to Jesus. Let's put into practice in our everyday lives, in our everyday work, this habit of listening to Jesus' call to convert that hour, that day of work into a means of sanctification. Okay, that's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good week ahead of you. There'll be more of this hopefully throughout the week. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. You're so in a hurry to go. Bye. Bye.